Hello everybody, my name is Sylvain Rochon and I am excited about getting people to expand their human experience using cutting edge technology and today we're going to be talking about 3D printing. Now uh, you've heard about 3D printing for quite a while, I mean it's it's been around technically on, on an industrial and experimental level since the uh, two th uh, for 1980s. Uh, but nobody was he really hearing about it because it was very, very industrial. It was very new. It was just for some prototyping and very basic things, uh, u mostly using plastics and sometimes using, I believe, they were uh, also able to use some uh, some metal and things like that. But it was mostly plastics. Uh, and uh, so it was a very industrial prototyping setting. But um, since 2009, then technological advances made it available on a commercial level where some universities were started experimenting with it on mu with multiple plastics and composites and ceramics and a little bit of a metal and it became way way cheaper uh, so uh, so even some businesses started using it uh, on a non-industrial scale so smaller scale for smaller things um, with more precision and things like that and since 2009, uh, we've moved on from you know basic it, basically it being a tool for prototyping for businesses and industry to something you can have in your home. You can actually buy a 3D printer at uh, your, your, your builder's shop, essentially. You can order one on the internet for about 300 bucks or less even uh, for a simple, simple thing. So it's very, very accessible. Now, I've done blogs about this before. Now, what's, uh, what's exciting is that we keep progressing, and now we're able to 3D print human tissue, or actually any kind of tissue, uh, organic tissue for that matter. And uh, the, more, the more exciting part was to be able to layer, create human skin. The skin is very thin. It, it can be done in layers, so it's a very um, good initial point <coughs> uh, as far as tissue is concerned for 3D printing. Uh, so we're basically layering the different layers of skin and we're making skin off of um, using some specific cells. And I, I don't know how the machine works exactly, but it deposits uh, the cells and then the cells kind of are glued together naturally because they have, you know, things like collagen and different chemicals that naturally glue together, uh, glue cells together. That's that's how they kind of stick together naturally, like in our in our body. And they can use those skin grafts essentially for uh, for burn victims and uh, for experimentation and uh, because it, 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 it just like it's just skin it's not intelligent it's kind of, kind of lab grown if you will but using 3d printer means that it, you don't need to grow it to kind of wait for it you're building it so it's much faster and uh, what, what's interesting about it is that because it's fast then you can start using a lot losing it a lot more for um, actually using the stem cells of the donor that you that will receive the graft uh, so you don't have any uh, any rejection from the body and things like that so you don't the person doesn't need to take anti-immune system uh, medication uh, anti autoimmune uh, medication and whatnot so it's really really good but we also have been experimenting with other organs other tissues like skin is the obvious choice because it is already in layers but we've already already been able to do things that are uh, fairly small and somewhat it's more complicated but still less complicated than uh, than say a heart or a liver but we've been able to do mouse ovaries and these are really tiny things that have very minimal um you know blood uh, blood systems because it's so small so they're easy to actually build and actually uh, and use and uh, we we have some mice uh, and the links are all in my blog you can read my blog from uh, from the down below uh, uh, we've had in labs like 3d printed ovaries that were that were responsible for to make new mouse pups so the the ovaries actually work they are functional uh, so we can probably, tr like, in, in a number of years, uh, just a few years, we can anticipate being able to 3D print larger organs and tissues, like, you know, human-sized ovaries, for example, and uh, make them available using the cells of a donor that has, you know, a missing ovary or non-functional ovaries, like a woman that uh, had some kind of disease where um, she can no longer have any children because of the ovaries. And then we can take some of her uh, some some of her stem cells and make them pluripotent which means they can become any any sort of tissue afterwards 
and then direct them to uh, to, to make uh, to make ovaries. Then we can 3D print the ovaries or grow them like an, uh, in the bioengineering ways. And we've been able to do fairly fairly well with bioengineering. And so instead of 3D printing, just engineering uh, organs like uh, in in my blog, I was talking about a bit the um, you know livers and colons. And these are small versions of them because there's a vasculation problem when you're growing. It takes a while. And you have to have uh, oxygen and food and, and food brought to all the cells. And if it's the organ is too big, then it, uh, without vasculation, without the veins essentially, and, and like blood pumping and all that stuff, it gets complicated in the middle. Uh, then these cells die uh, of the process. So we're able to bioengineer organs that are a very very small scale, but you can have like many of them. Uh, so, but it's a, it's a big start. So we're moving towards a, a time very soon in the next few years. Uh, where we could probably grow human-sized organs so we're, because we have some labs that are working on the vasculation issue uh, so that we can grow big organs. We can 3D print them possibly as well as that technology is going to grow. Uh, so if you have, for example, um, renal failure, uh, you know, your, uh, your kidneys, or kidney failures, not renal, kidney failure failures, um, you can probably... You know, they could probably take some cells, and over a few weeks, uh, while you're doing dialysis for the for these weeks, y you can get um, you can get um, new kidneys that are you your cells, and get them implanted, and then you're good to go. And you can go off dialysis and con continue with your life, and you don't need to take extra medicine, like uh, anti-rejection medicine. That's great. Now the next step after that, once we're able to do replacement organs properly, right now it's a small scale. We can do skin and perhaps some other some other tissues. Once we're able to do a lot of organs, we can probably look at, at making entire bodies using 3D printing. Why not? Uh, again, a lot of a lot of um, reasons to do it just for experimentation, so you can avoid a lot of the timelines for uh, trying to use animals to test drugs, for example. Now you can grow the organs or grow a body like a, an unconscious body, basically that doesn't have a brain and test the drugs on that in very specific ways so you avoid a bunch of time that is spent uh, testing on animals that don't have the same bi biochemistry exactly and sometimes it goes to a human trial and the drugs don't work as well or don't work at all so we can bypass all the human the animal testing which makes us happy because we don't want to test on animals right uh, and, and just use the, the the grown flesh and tissues with the right chemistry and and see if it works there and then you can go directly into a fairly minimal live human uh, human trial and and, and push the, the technique surgery or drug out to market much much faster and cheaper that's good for everybody and then later on for those of us who think a little bit farther ahead actually probably more f uh, quite farther ahead is that you know i'd like to have my 20 year old body again or if i could grow one and there is a way to you know, uh, transplant, I guess, who I am, like my brain, my knowledge, and, and who I am to a newer body, uh, that would be great. <laughs> I'm 42 years old now, and I'm feeling the uh, pain of age a little bit. Uh, it would be great to have a younger body and be able to continue with my knowledge, and essentially, that allows us to be essentially eternal, right, where we don't need to die of old age because we don't suffer from these aff the affliction of old age at all anymore. This is something for the future, and we there's a lot more stuff because transferring who we are to another body that's that's an entirely different challenge. But growing bodies, that's not that uh, that far ahead, and we can do it, and we can use it for research, transplantation, uh, anything like that, and then we can dump the um, you know the the pieces that we don't need that are is not used, and we can leave the animals alone, and we don't need to test on the uh, on human beings as much. It's really good. So that's all I wanted to say. I hope you're excited like me uh, about these advancements in medical research. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, we're going to a very interesting space in the future where we can manipulate things that people didn't think we could. And uh, I think we absolutely have to think about uh, our ability to, uh, to transform, protect, replace uh, dysfunctional aspects of our physiology in the near future and that allows us to be healthier live longer lives uh, I mean that's that's totally awesome isn't it
Anyway, that's going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you like my blogs and videos, just uh, subscribe and share as you will. And, um, and um, you know, uh, write some comments. I'm always active to, uh, to reply and uh, answer some questions there as well. Cheers for now. I will catch you next week.